So this video has been requested numerous times by my friend Tommy, YouTube user Redneck with an OA. And over the last few months, anytime I post something up on Facebook, he's always been pestering me saying, you know, when's that video gonna get finished? Come on, Bubba, get it done! So Tommy, I do apologize for the delay. I hope it was worth the wait. We got a lot of animals to get through in about nine and a half minutes to do it in. So let's just start with my uh, two non-cage bound pets, my little black kitty cats. This is Spike. I've had him for about five years. This is a little bitty baby. And I've taught him to do one really cute thing. Give me kitty kisses. Hey, kitty kisses. Oh, I want some kitty kisses. And this is Willow. Willow. Meow. You might love her, girl. This is why you give your kids a pet puppy when they ask. Right behind the Willow Kitty is where my collection started. A couple years ago, I decided to get her my fear of spiders, and I bought this cute little rose hare, who is face first in her water dish. Of course, I had to be so original and name her Charlotte, and she has been a really sweet spider. Over here is Paco's enclosure. She is nowhere to be found, and neither is Socket. He's a really good-looking gecko, though, I can tell you that. Paco here is one of my sweetest geckos. Now, she doesn't have a tail, like every other one of my cresties, but she's extremely personable, real sweetheart. Now this is about all you really can hold socket, otherwise he just jumps out of the enclosure. Here I have two juvenile crested geckos that are going to go into these top two enclosures when they hit about 10 grams. This is Doodle. And all my geckos, she is the most personable and the cutest. Look who decides to show his face. This is Kitten. It's probably my favorite looking crested gecko that I have. Over here is the only gecko making an appearance. My darling little Nutmeg. This is Nutmeg. Nutmeg is my big girl. She's a 45 gram lizard. Over here we have my sling and juvenile tarantula shelf. This is my Tapanakinius gigas. Little tiny baby. I mean, you can see how tiny that thing is compared to my fingernail. I really adore this thing. And here is my baby Tyrannochilus lugardi, also known as the Doma Starburst baboon or the Fort Hall baboon. This is one of my green bottle blue babies. I've had them about a year now. Got them at three quarters of an inch and they're now about, oh, an inch and three quarters maybe. They're gonna be really wild colored when they grow up. I really can't wait to see their adult coloration. Her name's Cassie. She's a baby Lassidora parahybana. This is one of the biggest species of tarantulas in the world. Before she disappears, there's Anara. My piece of the regalis. It's about 2.75 inches and recently molted. What a little beauty. Over here, my leopard geckos. Now this is a normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill leopard gecko. Her name is Sobi. I have two others in her enclosure with her. Next to my leopard geckos is Annabelle. This is Annabelle. She is my bitchy rose hair. And she has been digging herself to China in this enclosure over and over and over again. Right underneath Annabelle is Seven. My grandma stole polka peas. This is Seven. Yeah, she bit me the day I got her. We haven't had a repeat of it since. Next to Seven is Jasmine. My Brachypilma Smith Eye. This is Jasmine. She's my Brachypilma Smith Eye, a pet rock, and probably the best first tarantula for anybody to get. I picked her up at about an inch and a half to inch and three quarters 
and she is now a whopping three and a quarter inches after a year and a half in my care. In this enclosure is my butter motley corn snake. Sonia here is the newest member of my collection. When I was researching my first pet snake, I either wanted a corn or a ball python. Ball python won out in the end, but I decided on the old tarantula philosophy of pick one and get both. So, I decided on this little girl. She uh, really captured my heart. Now, she is the only member of my collection that is actually a U.S. native species. This is 3 a.m. My Megalovicularia vicularia. Over here is my female emperor scorpion awaiting a new enclosure. Got a couple of crystal gecko eggs. Ariel was asking me about what kind of a setup I have my scorpions in. Well, I have one scorpion in here. It's my male. Let's see if I can find one around there. There you go. I really like them because they glow underneath black light. Of course, it's daylight now, and you know, the black light's on, we can't see it very well. Someone was also asking me about 3 a.m. It is the most beautiful pink toes I've ever seen in my life. Is that is my ball python. His name is Sasha. That is a boy's name. Sasha is my spider morph ball python. I decided on the spider morph because spider genetic goes into everything. And since I may want to breed this animal in the future, and he's going to be with me a good long time, I need a really good strong base to work with. Not only that, but when I held him at the pet store, we kind of bonded. And yeah, he's. <laughs> He's my little buddy. I love him to death. Wouldn't trade him for the world. And this is my arboreal rack. Over here, in this enclosure, is nothing. Nothing but a little waterfall and a pond. I haven't decided what I want to put in it, but it sure looks nice. Next to that is Ava. My female avicularia avicularia. Next to Ava. My favorite tarantula. Her name is Sakura. She's my Vicularia versicolor and my absolute favorite spider. Next to Sakura is an empty enclosure, but next to that is everybody's favorite psycho. This is Desiree. And this is a 10 gallon tank. It is pretty good size. And I am not going in there to maintain her enclosure today. That's for sure. Beneath my arboreal rack are my roach colonies. Over here are my blabberous hybrids. There's my black dubia. And I got some supply drawers. This is the most commonly kept species of feeder roach. This is Blaptica dubia. I believe they're called the Ghana orange spot roach. There's an adult female right there. There's an adult male. They get to be about an inch and a half. And they need a little higher temperatures to breed, so they just can't go around and infest. In fact, they got plastic all around the uh, edges here of the colony. They can't climb this. This next species of roach is actually cross-hybrid. These are the genus Blabberus. And they are a cross-hybrid between death's head roaches and Brazilian cave roaches. I've been working with this colony for about a year. I started with 10 original members, and as you can see, it's quite grown. The controlling the breeding temps has also controlled the population. Contrary to popular opinion, roaches are actually very clean and uh, non-infested animals. Imagine that. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I really do like doing these videos, but unfortunately I do have limited time and availability to do any kind of filming. So if the video looks a little inconsistent and pieced together, I'm sorry, that's because it is. <laughs> While I'm filming this video though, I had an idea and started work on a new video that will be on the ethics of a hobby. Not only to give non-hobbyists the correct information about the hobby, but to give existing hobbyists a little bit of ammunition and backing when they get these difficult questions posed to them. This is going to be really fun and you don't want to miss it. Until next time, thanks for watching.